Hey, I'm Jake. I make RPG supplements and videos about Pathfinder 2, or Puff 2. I love Puff 2, and as a longtime player of D&D and a lot of other games, I want to share the things that I find along the way and share them with you in a way that makes them easy to digest and hopefully fun. Today we have the Goblin Thug. It's a ruffian rogue, basically. This character was a request to make a ruffian rogue, so I did. But I couldn't just stand by and let perfectly good opportunities go. So use it. I hope you have fun with your hired thug demolitionist, Cole the Firebug. So let's get to the build, starting with the backstory. Cause you know I gotta. Now, Cole doesn't really know what goblin tribe he comes from, because he was just found in the street eating scraps from a butcher shop one day. Even then, he was a clever little guy, very curious and attentive. He was just a few months old, but those goblin teeth at that age are sharp as needles, which his rescuers found out upon first grab. They hauled him up out of the filth and muck, and after that first chomp, when the rescuers didn't let go, little goblin baby just hung there by his ankle and stared in some semblance of contemplation. Even if he was only wondering what the other hand would taste like, it still seemed to show a goblin that was willing to pause and consider his next actions. This alone surprised and impressed his rescuers, and they took him home. With little fuss, one of the bandits letting the little piranha chaw, chew and gnaw on one of his horse straps on the way there. <laughs> Later at home, the goblin was given the name Carl, after the son of one of his rescuers. Big Carl, it was joked. He grew up in smoke-filled casinos and in a rotating flurry of beds under varying caregivers. The smell of alcohol-laden breath and the thrum of music lulled him to sleep. The small, thoughtful goblin learned to follow instructions to the letter, and he grew quickly, finding his longest-lasting home in the arms of Shayla, the most loving and giving assassin in town. His lessons were taught by a variety of whatever lowlife scumbags were around as he grew up in the Thieves' Guild. Shayla took him aside, and where others assumed that because he spoke slowly he must be a fool, she saw a quiet carefulness inside him instead. A carefulness that would be very valuable to someone learning her trade, alchemy. He did as ordered, of course, which led to him learning the rough trades of extortion and violence, but he never seemed as pleased as when he was lighting a fuse for Shayla or gathering black powder together with glee. Once he was a man in the eyes of his elders, he was sent on missions or jobs on his own, but he excelled at nothing more than setting businesses ablaze. When it was time to foreclose on the protection of a given shopkeep, he would be sent to handle the job. After the shop owner and family was either asleep or gone, his work would begin. After one particularly large job involving a warehouse, he didn't report in. He was found half a day later, covered in soot and wearing nothing but a smile. He'd been caught in his own fire, you see. Well, caught isn't exactly the right word. He had stayed too long watching in sheer joy as the blaze surrounded him. And only then did he learn his greatest gift. He was friends with fire. It bent away from him and allowed him to see through its breath, leading him safely out. The day he returned home, he was given a new name, Cole. He constantly started fires after that day, and he wore soot like a badge of honor. Carl usually goes by Cole, but he also answers to Big Carl, Firebug, and Hey, Big Man! He's deferential and polite as a rule, and when he speaks, it's very literal, unless he is being given instructions for a job, which is always in code. Like something he might say that's literal. I do not believe it to be in your best interest, nor in the best interests of your family, to refuse my employer's invitation to dinner. I would accept it if I was you. Or in code. I don't like Thursday for the dress rehearsal. Maybe Monday at 6 o'clock. Meaning? Your target has changed his plans. You'll need to be there four hours later and bring a few other guys with you. He'll have protection. Now to the background. Criminal. Obviously. Which gives you experienced smuggler, which says... You often smuggle things past the authorities. 
When the GM rolls your stealth check to see if a passive observer notices a small item you have concealed, you automatically get a flat 10 or higher, depending on your skill level. Not, not just flat, it's 10 plus your ability modifier and your other skill bonuses. Due to your smuggling skill, you're also more likely to find more lucrative smuggling jobs when using underworld lore to earn income. So it's cool. When you earn income as a downtime activity with underworld lore, you gain a little extra cash. That's handy. Ancestry and heritage. Goblins get dark vision and will take the Ifrit heritage. Because fire! It says, you gain resistance to fire equal to half your level, minimum one, and you treat environmental heat effects as if they were one step less severe. Which is very useful if you're caught in a burning building. Or just stick around one too long. First level ancestry feat will take inner fire. It's an Ifrit feat, which gives us produce flame. So you can conjure flame in your hand and throw it. You can do damage with it, it's basic damage cantrip. It's nice for flavor also, but it's also handy if you're somewhere with explosives and no lighter, or tinder twigs. First level we take rogue, which gives a sneak attack of 1d6, which works if you're using an agile or finesse simple weapon and your opponent is flat footed. And if you've been rolling deception or stealth and combat starts, creatures that haven't acted are flat footed to you. So basically you catch them by surprise. Also at first level we gain the rogue's racket, their subclass. We'll choose ruffian. It says, you prefer to strong arm or intimidate others rather than rely on finesse or fancy tricks. You use whatever tools you have at hand to get the job done. You can deal sneak attack damage with any simple weapon. And if you crit with one while the enemy is flat footed, you get to use the critical specialization effect for that weapon. That's awesome. At first level, you get critical specialization effect that, like, fighters get. That's awesome. <laughs> You're trained in intimidation and medium armor. You can choose strength as your key ability score, which we will do. And our favorite weapon is going to be a hand cannon. That's right, we're just shooting people. We probably even have a few of them on us. And because we get the critical specialization effect, we can stun people if we crit them. If your GM doesn't want you to use guns, totally fine. Just use a mace, hand, crossbow, or simple club. The club totally fits this character's vibe. First level skill feat will be pickpocket. It says, you can steal or palm an object that's closely guarded, such as in a pocket, without taking the minus five penalty. Pretty nice. Convenient for just picking pockets. It will be handy, but we're actually taking it for the next feat. Plant evidence. You can put a single item you're holding of light or negligible bulk onto a person without them noticing by succeeding at a thievery check against their perception DC. I don't know how they wouldn't notice you're holding it and then you're not. If you have the ruffian racket, you can do this as a free action when you successfully shove a target. So you can incriminate anyone you want with a crime if you need to, like to get away with something. I saw the jewels in his pocket. Show him, show him, I won't go down for you shove them and put the jewels in their pocket. <laughs> Such a wholesome character. Fun for the whole family. Second level class feat, brutal beating. We continue with the family friendness. It says the brutality of your critical hits shakes your foe's confidence. Whenever your strike is a critical hit and deals damage, the target is frightened one. I have no idea how this works with a gun. Just smack him with the butt of the gun. But it totally does. If you crit with a gun, they're stunned and frightened. Yay! I kind of just took it because it's special to ruffian rogues, It, but it, it's awesome. It, it's really cool. Second level archetype feat, and of course I'm assuming, like with I am with all my builds, that you're taking the, you're using the optional archetype feat, bonus feat, archetype bonus feat. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> optional rule. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time saying this here. I'm assuming that you're playing with the free archetype variant rule. Your GM will know what that is. So second level archetype feat. Alchemist. You might have guessed this. Kind of easy. Alchemist dedication. You become trained in alchemical bombs and crafting. You can make items in downtime or you can create free items during your daily preparations. I'll have a list of suggested formulas in the notes section of the character sheet the PDF of which will be on the website, so you can download it when you're done here. So at this point, 
Here's what you can do at second level. I love that you can do this at second level. You've made some alchemical bombs ahead of time. Let's use alchemist fire as an example. Because fire. Um, you have a few with alchemical fuses attached, which you can also make. You're in melee combat, hopefully against a surprised enemy. You use a tinder twig to light the bomb as you pull it out, because that's how it works. Then you shove a target using athletics up to 10 feet away. You roll thievery to plant evidence on the target. What evidence? A bomb! And, you know, you have an action left, I guess. You could, like, roll intimidation to demoralize to give them frightened. Okay, technically, when you attach an alchemical fuse, the bomb only does the splash damage. But come on, it's a bomb in their pocket. How are they going to avoid that damage? Now that's a hot pocket. I'm not sorry. Second level skill feat, streetwise. You can use society instead of diplomacy for gather information, or sometimes as recall knowledge instead of rolling diplomacy to gather information. Because it's recall knowledge instead of gather information, you don't have to spend time trying to get the info. You just know the streets. Makes sense for a gang member. Third level, deny advantage. This is rogue ability. You can't be sneak attacked or flat footed by anyone your level or lower. Cool. It rarely comes up, but it can, and it can save your ass. I've seen it really helpful before, but I'm the kind of person who runs assassins against my players. <clears throat> I mean, the player characters, not the players themselves. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Skill feat. Criminal connections. We can call on favors or help from fellow gang members or other friends of the family. For the general feat, we will take breath control. We go from being able to hold our breath for six rounds to 15 minutes. It's most useful for when we get caught in our own smoke from fires that we set, because we will, but also for like hiding in a river when we're trying to hide from the local cops. Guards. Guards. Fourth level. From the alchemist archetype, basic concoction, we get the alchemist feat, demolition charge, which says you can rig your bombs to inanimate objects and cause destruction to the surrounding area. It takes one minute. You attach between one and four bombs to an inanimate object within your reach, such as a chest, door, wall, or column, and you can trigger the bombs as a single action so long as you're within 30 feet of them. So it's a reaction. Somebody moves into the area, you trigger the bombs, this damage ignores an amount of the object's hardness equal to your level, which makes it really easy to destroy locks, walls, doors. Reducing hardness is a big deal. Um, any creatures adjacent to the area also take the bomb splash damage. This is the main ability we use to gain our reputation for loving explosions and fire. We bomb for the mob. And we can use bombs to lay traps for enemies as well because we can hide the bombs. It's really useful. Now, this is one of the many times I'll ask you to talk with your GM because technically, well, the only time in this video, but I've done it before. Anyway, you can only, technically you can only take basic concoction once, which we just did. Then you can't get another alchemist feat until sixth level. But their feats are fun. Okay, so Technically, to follow the rules perfectly, we'll need to take Quick Alchemy as our archetype feat, which allows you to save batches of infused reagents until later and then make an alchemical item on the fly when you need it, which is cool. But if your GM allows it, you can take another basic concoction for an alchemical familiar, which has a lot of useful options, but it's just cool. For a rogue, it can help you with deception, thievery, make an impression, lore checks. It can take your shape to help you get away. <laughs> it can help you gather information because it's cute. And for us, it can even swallow a bomb and change it into one that does persistent damage instead of splash damage. It makes it sticky. I just love that it can swallow a bomb. <laughs> Here, little pupper. Here, eat that. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> Level 4 skill feat. 
quick coercion is what we'll take here so that coercing a creature with intimidate only takes one round instead of a minute. Usually this will be with heavily veiled threats like, what are you doing at? Why you wanna do that? No, come, come on, come over here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Isn't that better? Who told you? No, no, come here, come here. Who told you you should come over here and do this? Was it Molivaro? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. I'll take care of him for you. Thank you. It helps if you watch, like, mob movies before you play this character. Level 5, we get sneak attack to 2d6 instead of 1d6. And we take the skill feat. There's so many skill feats for a rogue. Skill feat, group coercion. Now you can try to coerce up to four people at once with only one action. Because quick coercion. You are really good at getting people to do what you want. Scary little goblin. You know, it occurs to me that you could even have a gimmick of like spreading oil on your arm or I guess your back or legs discreetly and then lighting yourself on fire while intimidating people. You take very little or no damage and it's a good explanation for how you're so damned intimidating. <laughs> um, level five ancestry feat. Fire sight. We got a lot out of a free this time round. You can see through the haze of flame. You automatically succeed at the flat check to target a concealed creature if that creature is concealed only by smoke and fire. And we can make smoke sticks, which creates smoke. You see where I'm going with this? Hiding in the smoke and then popping out of it to shoot someone or punch them in the face like the shadow. <laughs> Level six class feat. Now you'll take expert alchemy from the alchemist multi-class archetype to be able to make up to level three alchemical items, which includes a whole ton of stuff. I'll include some of those ideas in the character sheet too. If you want to make poisons, cool, go for it. You're a rogue, you can make use of that. Just remember to make stuff during your downtime. Uh, you could be the go-to member of your party for any miscellaneous need. Or you can just blow stuff up. You know which one I'd pick. <laughs> Level six, you'll take the Demolitionist Dedication. Now you can set your place charges on a timer up to a minute. It can also just be like one round, like at the end of my turn, it'll blow. And it only takes two actions to slap the bombs onto a structure. It's just perfect for taking out a rival gang's headquarters or a warehouse that belongs to somebody important. You've also gotten good at implicating rivals in your explosive duties. So it looks like another gang set that fire in the mayor's mansion. You can even set the explosives, get out quick, like jump out the window or something. Then run around to the front door saying, hey, we, we heard some bad fellas might be harassing you. It okay if I come in, take a quick peek, you know, look around. And then you find the explosives and disarm them. Instant friends. Using bombs to make friends. For the level six skill feat, you'll take say that again. It says, the world is full of obnoxious weasels who think they can pull one over on you. Put them in their place. I love the flavor text in the system. <clears throat> when an adjacent creature attempts to lie to you or to demoralize you and gets critical failure on the roll, you can use a reaction to make a shove attempt against that opponent. And then you can stick a bomb in their pocket. <laughs> If combat results, you can roll intimidation for your initiative check. You stand up to punks that might diss your employer gang. Then you shove them and plant a gun in their pocket and then search them to show that they meant violence the whole time. Yeah, framing people is just part of life. That's just what you do. Like most rogues in combat, you'll also be flanking for sneak attack and giving conditions to enemies like frightened. Intimidation is a natural choice for a ruffian. So continuing this character on past sixth level, you'd be well served by continuing the, demolition, or the demolitionist archetype and taking explosive entry as seventh level feat. It lets you blow up openings like doors, windows, gates, and the like. I'd also definitely take alchemical familiar at some point because it's fun. You can have a little puppy that never grows up. Name him Ruff. Because, you know, life is hard. I got a Ruff. 
You're welcome. Level 12 of Demolitionist also allows you to collapse a wall onto your enemies, and it does a lot of damage and buries them in rubble, and they have to spend actions to get out of it. Meanwhile, you're poking them in the face, or shooting them. Fireworks Technician is also fun for some niche explosives like the Goblin Jubilee display. That's a 20-foot burst within 120 feet, does 3d6 sonic and 3d6 fire damage, and it can blind, dazzle, and deafen. It's a fireball, but better. At a later level, sure. And Golden League Zune is a cool archetype. At 10th level, you can kill someone in a crowded room and hide the weapon, so nobody knows who did it. Maybe not even the dude you stabbed. Or shot. <clears throat> so So he's got this tough guy goblin who follows orders to the letter Very loyal to the people that treat him right And he's also not afraid to tell it like it is He's got a code though, a code of honor Which none of these mooks can understand or you could just play up the stupid thug aspect, because he likes to keep people guessing. He's actually brilliant. Anyone who can make their own explosives and survive has got to have some extra brains in their pocket. Hey, I just want to give a shout out to Turtles Tumbles Dice. And she is a handmade artist and dice crafter that has some really beautiful work. I especially like her geo dice, really pretty and sparkly. She doesn't have a storefront yet, but if you're interested, she does commissions and you can find her on Facebook. I'll leave the link in the description, drop her a DM and see what she has in stock, because who doesn't need more dice? And they're pretty! Thank you for being here, and thank you to our lovely patron people. I release unique videos on Patreon. You, there was a, a sample on our channel recently. I also do giveaways and we chat in our patron only discord if you'd like to see if you might be interested you can click in the description to do that if you want to make sure to catch the next build I make hitting the subscribe button is a good way to bookmark the page so you can remember to check back later and see what I've done this build's walkthrough is on my website the link is in the description and a PDF of this character's fillable character sheet already built for sixth level link in the description if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, so I know what videos are hit or miss. Maybe you guys like explosions. Maybe I'm totally off and nobody likes explosions. That's not the case. And feel free to leave a comment, especially if I missed something, or if you have ideas that could go with this build. I love the brainstorming. And remember, three bananas in hand is worth two clams in the bush.